Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. I am Monet and you're watching Life is Monet. I've acquired very recently quite a few books that are going to be added to my collection, but I decided that, you know, I don't really upload hauls as much as I used to. I do post like shopping vlogs with me where I do like a mini haul, but I haven't really sat down and done like a haul video. Since my birthday was recently, I received quite a few books. I have some arcs here that I want to talk about as well as some books that I have not even opened. Um, I received some special editions due to my fairy loot subscription. So yeah, just wanted to share all of my newest acquisitions and my books with with you all today. Start off with an Amazon packet that is not actually open yet, but I'm pretty sure it was a birthday gift. So this first package includes two books that was sent to me by my deepest friend Alana. Um, she sent me Air of Uncertain Magic. I read uh, Keeper of Enchanted Rooms and my cozy uh, fantasy by indie authors vlog that I updated <laughs> that I uploaded earlier this year, and I loved Keeper of Enchanted Rooms. I gave it five stars. I was pleasantly surprised by how well written the story was, especially by in the author. Um, literally, Charlie writes as though like she has been at it for years. She does have so many books, but she deserves um, traditional publishing. But I have been eating up her works, and I'm so excited to read the sequel to Keeper of Enchanted Rooms. I'm definitely going to put this on my TBR for the fall of this year. I actually don't know what the Heir of Uncertain Magic is about. I don't know if we're going to be following the same characters, but I kind of want to go into it very blind. I will be totally okay if we're following the same characters from before. I do feel like they got a complete story but you never know the author can take a story in a different direction whenever they see fit so I would be totally down for that but I'm also down if we're following different characters in this book as well. The second book that she sent me is one that I am extremely excited for and it is an anticipated five-star read and that's going to be The Library of Broken Worlds. We're following Frida who is the daughter of this very vast and ever-changing library and she has spent her entire life within the walls of this library exploring it and she has very unique magical abilities that make her a formidable force. Frida meets Joshua who is a boy desperate to save his people as well as Nergoi who is a member of a persecuted religious minority and she feels obligated to step in and help them but in order to do so she will have to venture deeper into this library than she has ever done before. She will come face to face with a lot of atrocities of the past and the pending war of the future and all of these things will put her at odds with an ancient god that she will go up against and I am very excited about having this magical component a very powerful um, main character that is trying to save uh, two different groups of people going to war with a god using the power and the magical abilities that is gifted upon her by this library that she is the child of. That just sounds so beautiful and I can't wait to pick this book up. Opening a second packet here. This is actually from Ray from Bookmark Chronicles for my birthday so thank you for that. Ray sent me Meet Me at the Lake which is a romance story that I've heard very very great things about as well as A Quiet Life in the Country. Um, I plan to do a cozy mystery vlog same way that I did a cozy fantasy vlog um and I put quite a few books on my wish list that fit within that genre and this is the second book that is going into that cozy mystery uh vlog that Ray has gotten me so she is really sponsoring future content for my channel I really appreciate it I'm looking forward to both of these and so happy to have them on my collection the next is an arc that I received from Orbit and that is going to be the Hexologist this is by Josiah Bancroft the same author that wrote Sin and the Sins this is the first book in his newest series. Um, the synopsis is kind of all over the place, I'm not gonna lie, but it sounds like this group of hexologists actually set out to solve magical mysteries using enchanted relics to help them solve it along the way. Um, but then there is this king that bakes himself into a cake and it sets off this chain of events that sends the hexologists on one of their greatest journeys yet. I don't know what to expect with this story. I have not read Selen Ascends. I own it but I haven't read it yet. Um, but I was very interested to see what the author is going to do next. Also, the synopsis of this one was just so far out of left field compared to what I know about Sin of the Sins that, like, I'm very interested in bringing this up just from the intrigue alone and the switch and, like, the writing pivot on behalf of the author. The next one is also an arc, but this one came from Red Hook, and that is going to be Wildwood Magic. This is the sequel to Wildwood Whispers by Willa Reese. I don't know if we're following the same character in this story, but in the 
the first book we're following this young woman that has recently lost her best friend um they both were very estranged from their family they were orphans and they were deeply deeply connected and so she's having a really hard time grieving the loss of her friend and so she decides to travel back to her friend's home of this small like kind of town and village that exists within the Appalachian Mountains and there is a lot of magical realism within the story um but she ends up finding this home away from home and a place to help her grieve the loss of her closest friend and she gets healed in so many unexpected ways throughout the story. I really enjoyed the story and it's one that is really not talked about in the bookish community but I was really interested and intrigued to know that there is a sequel to that story and I can't wait to pick it up. The next book that I picked up was The Wager. This is by the same author that wrote Flowers of the Killer Moon, which I have heard exceptional things about. And in true Monet fashion, I hear so much about a book by an author that I don't pick up, but I always pick up the next book <laughs> that they have written. I don't know why I do that. I prefer to read freshly from the author and then go to their backlist for the majority of the time. I don't know why I do that. That's just the way that I am. But um, because I've heard so many great things about Killers of the Flower Moon, I decided to pick up The Wager. We have a ship that sailed during the war between Britain and Spain in the 1740s, and it basically wrecked and washed ashore on this random island where they had to survive for a few years. And then 30 passengers actually built this kind of like makeshift boat and they sailed almost 3,000 miles on a treacherous sea just to make their way to Brazil and they were greeted as heroes but then six months later another boat lands in Chile and they tell a different story of the experience of this boat the shipwreck that happened and the island that they washed up on and so now we have uh, two different groups of survivors from this initial ship that are telling different stories about one another and then the navy of Britain actually court martial all of them to figure out who was telling the truth of what happened on this island and how anarchy rose among these sailormen. Um, this is a life or death situation because whoever the court martial finds guilty is likely to hang. This sounds like a story of just drama and mess and just trying to figure out who's telling the truth and I almost want to listen to it on audiobook. I hope that it has a very good audiobook because I think it would tell a really great story. So the next group of books is what my husband actually bought me on my birthday because he took me book shopping and that was really nice. Uh, surprisingly, I picked up Tress of the Emerald Sea. I've talked about wanting to put this on my July TBR to read. Although I'm not the biggest Sanderson fan, this book just sounded too interesting to pass up. I'm hoping that when I finish it, it's at least a three or three and a half star read. There's just something about Sanderson's book that just kind of forewarns me that I'm never going to be able to give it like four or five star reads, but I'm really hoping for like a decent three star read of this book. I would be pleasantly surprised if I ended up rating it higher. And then I also picked up book one and book two of the series written by Carissa Broadbent. I don't know the name of the series but the first book is, oh it's called The Crowns of Nyaxia. Sorry about that. The first book is The Serpent and the Wings of Night and the sequel is The Ashes and the Star Cursed King. I've actually started reading The Serpent and the Wings of Night. I'm about 40% of the way through. I'll hold my opinions and what I think so far. Um, um, until I actually finish but I am surprised of course I have to do something a little bit different I couldn't read Daughter of No Worlds because just too many people were talking about it right now it's an oversaturated opinion market around that book so I went with something that is not as talked about not as raved about and also not finished. This series follows Araya who is the human daughter to this all-powerful vampire king. So she is basically prey in a world filled with predators. Her vampire king father has done everything he can to train her to be this warrior and this fighter and to protect herself but at the end of the day she is just simply not as powerful as the vampires of this world. Araya personally sees her humanness as a weakness um, and so she has asked her vampire father to change her but because it is such a tenuous process process and two in every three turnings actually end in death. He refuses to risk her life in this way. And so they have this alternate plan where Oriah is actually going to compete in this competition to the goddess of vampires. Her name is Nyaxia. And if you are a winner of these very dangerous trials, the goddess will bless you with one gift. And so Araya is hoping to win the trials, even though it's a very dangerous situation, to get this gift from the goddess to where her humanness wouldn't be a weakness per se, and that she could be as powerful as she needs to be to survive in a world filled with predators. But the trials in this competition prove to be more difficult than anticipated, and so Araya ends up partnering up with a member of a rival household to her father. And so she has to balance this romantic attraction to this predator who may kill her just because 
because one, he's a vampire and she's human. He's more powerful and stronger than her, but also he is literally an enemy to her father's house because his people have led a rebellion constantly over the course of history. Um, so, so far it's interesting and I don't know what to say about the sequel. I don't know where we're going, but that is the setup for this world. The next two are special editions that were included in my fairy loot box. The first one is The Curse of Saints. Um, I believe that this is a YA story. We're following a spy master to the queen who is sent to investigate this rising dark magic from a rival kingdom nearby. And she is also sent with the queen's enforcer who she has a very weird relationship with. Once she gets there, she realizes that she is at risk of her powers being used to turn her into a weapon of a war that she is not sure she knows how to win and the development of her romantic relationship with the Queen's Enforcer puts them both in danger. Actually really I haven't seen um, this book without the dust jacket but I thought it was a really cute cover. Of course it's signed by the author uh, and this is what it looks like underneath the dust jacket. It's like this rose gold color. Will I pick it up sometime soon? Probably not but if you have read it let me know in the comment section if it's worth me picking it up and moving it up on my TBR. And then the second one is an adult book called Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. I have too many books by this author and by too many I mean two that I have not picked up yet. Um, I know that this is the same author that wrote An Enchanted River and I haven't read neither one. I wouldn't call this a fantasy romance but it is a fantasy book that is romance heavy. Um, there is a war that's happening and we have a uh, male and female characters that are being pen pals to one another. Even though they're rivals in real life they're confiding in one another through uh, being pen pals and writing secret letters back and forth and so neither one of them knows um, that they are investing their deepest darkest fears and insecurities and secrets into the person that they least want to have that power over them. I also haven't seen this book without the dust jacket but it is so pretty. I don't think you guys can my camera's not gonna pick up on the designs um, but there's also rose gold designs on the cover and this is the edge of the novel. And then I have an unopened fairy loot box so I'm gonna open that one now. This is the first book we have. The Shanghai Immortal. This is a beautiful beautiful book. I don't know anything about it. Let's look at the card. This book follows Lady Jing, a half vampire, a half fox spirit, who lives as a serpent of the King of Hell. This story is a journey through hell and mortal Shanghai as she tries to solve the mystery of her heritage. Very interesting. I love the cover design. This is like such a beautiful book. I can't believe I haven't heard of this. Rose gold seems to be the design of choice for fairy loot special editions but that's interesting. The back of this book says I may be irresponsible, impertinent, and improper but I am not stupid. I'm not gonna lie to you. It sounds like this is gonna be a great time. Okay, that isn't the most beautiful quote or writing in the world, but we have a character who's admitting that they can be hot-headed and irresponsible and reckless, but they're not dumb. And one thing I'm tired of seeing in my books is a dumb character, so this may be a good time. And then the second special edition that was included in this fairy loot box probably is unexpected. This is Sing Me to Sleep. Can you look at this freaking cover art? A dark skinned main character? Baby, they want you to know. They want you to know. She is black, honey. She's black, honey. I am here for this. I don't know what this one is about, but I love this right here. It's a vibe, it's a moment. Underneath the cover, the dust jacket, and then we have some art on the end pages. Honey, he's black too, honey. Do you see this, baby? He's black too. It's a black story. I'm excited. I might pick this up tonight. It says that Cersei survives on secrets. As the last siren in her kingdom, she can sing any man to an early grave, but her very existence is illegal. And if her true identity was ever discovered, it would be her life on the line. Love that. Sirens that are actually dangerous, not little mermaids, it's all cute. Like, uh, give, me, give me a dangerous siren, I'm here for it. It says by day, Cersei disguises herself as a fae. A siren pretending to be a fae? We're getting a little off track here. Pretending to be the perfect soldier in training. By night, she satisfies her darkest urges, working as an assassin for dangerous mercenaries. 
I like it. And all the while, she keeps the biggest secret of all, that she is not always in control of her siren powers and her desire to kill. She's a little reckless. We don't know what we're going to get with her. Then a blackmailer threatens her sister and Cersei's investigation takes her to the royal palace and her most dangerous job yet, personal bodyguard to the crown prince. Cersei expects to despise Prince Hayes, but he is kind, thoughtful, and charming and she finds herself increasingly drawn to him until he tasks her with investigating a killer plaguing the kingdom. The problem is that the killer is Cersei. Trapped by her deadly double life, Cersei can't leave the palace until she saves her sister but who will save her from herself so we have a main character that is a deadly killer that has the urge to kill that can't really control it or stop it and she needs to save her sister but she's also supposed to be hunting down this killer that is her five star prediction five star prediction hand down i'm still never gonna go with this fan art though this is gorgeous honey and then we have two packages here um, that I'm pretty sure are special edition books that I ordered. I was in the middle of moving earlier this year and so I had them mailed uh, to a friend of mine instead and they just took a while getting the books to me. So I'm so excited for these because I have waited literally all year for them. They took forever to ship uh, and now I'm having a hard time opening the packet. <gasps> This is my special edition box of Daughter of Smoke and Bone. Oh my goodness. Seriously? Karu and Akiva? Honey. Honey, honey, honey. Special edition box of Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I'm so stoked about this because the design of the book and even the book sleeve is the same as Strange the Dreamer. Um, I got the same... Uh, special editions and so this design actually matches my strange the dreamer set and so now i can put them side by side and i am so stoked about it we have daughter of smoke and bone which actually has a different side character on the cover and then karu is on the back of the book this is the first time that i've seen a special edition showcase um other characters in the story and not necessarily the main characters so i really like that and then we have days of blood and starlight this is also um a, a secondary character in the book and then we have another secondary character on the back if you've read them then you know who these characters are these are also supposed to be annotated by Lainey Taylor so this feels like the perfect time for me to go and do a reread because when I reread Strength the Dreamer and I was able to read her notes about like her thoughts her processes what she was hoping to accomplish with each scene that was such a beautiful experience to be able to be in the head of your author as they were narrating you through or like kind of giving you hints and clues throughout like how they created your favorite story it is such a fun experience so um I will certainly be rereading Daughter of Smoking Bone before the end of the year. And then we have Dreams of Gods and Monsters. Uh, and then on the back, we have Karu and Akiva, which is a bit of a, like, I'm not going to say spoiler, um, but a bit of a misnomer, misrepresentation for what's going to occur in this book. But yeah, I can't wait to check out Lainey Taylor's notes. I'm so excited. And then I have my second special edition that I've ordered. I'm going to open this from the bottom because that was just too much work from the top last time. Okay, these are my special editions of um, House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass, which, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I really did not like the sequel. So it probably wasn't the smartest thing for me to invest in the special editions, but I really loved um, the first book, which is House of Earth and Blood. The series is called Crescent City, of course, and this is the book sleeve. Let me see if I can get the book out of here. This is a very, very beautiful edition of the story. I don't remember the book being this thick when I read it. Like this is, it feels thicker than it should be. Like maybe the book is shorter. Um, so the pages, there's more pages in the story. But this, I'm not even mad at it even though I didn't like the sequel and I gave it one star. This is just too beautiful of a book to pass up. We have Danica and Bryce inside the book and then we have Bryce on the cover again with with Fairy Loot they love their gold and their rose gold on the side and then this is the back of the book I'm not mad at it I'm happy to have it a part of my collection even if you know the series goes downhill because I still enjoyed the first book very much
Let me put this back in here because it's too beautiful to just be out here in the fucking world existing with no protection. And then the sleeve is basically the same for um, House of Sky and Breath. And this one, it pisses me off that the sequel says light it up because that is just reminding me of what I didn't like about this is that it was too similar to book one. It like relied heavily on exhausted plot lines and tricks that had already been used. Like the rabbit had already been pulled out of the hat in book one and in the sequel Sarah J Mass put the rabbit back in the hat and pulled it out again. And I was just like girl be fucking for real. Be for real. But still House of Sky and Breath is a beautiful book as well. Like, now I have to get, I have to get the next one. Like, I just have to own all three. Hopefully, you know, she can redeem herself from this heaping, beautiful pile of trash that this book was. And then the last set of books actually came from Robin over at Robin Reads. Uh, the first book that she sent is Come As You Are. This is a nonfiction story about women's sexuality. It's the surprising science that will transform your sex life. Exploring sexuality in a book is always a fun time. And then I have Did You Hear About Kitty Carr? This is a historical novel, historical fiction novel. I read the synopsis of it in Barnes & Noble's one day when it was released. But um, Barnes & Noble's was tripping on that price. Yep, it was $28 and as much as I wanted to read the story I put it back on the shelf because $28 it wasn't given that so I didn't want to grab it uh, but I'm very grateful um, that Robin sent this to me from my Amazon wish list because you know I haven't been in my historical fiction bag as much as I want to like last year I was eating up the historical fictions and we were doing great um, but this year I haven't read as many and like I think my top historical fiction read right now would be The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna that may have been literally the last historical fiction that I read and I read it in like February or March of this year so it is time for me to pick up another one. Now it's been several months since I've read the synopsis of this story so I don't remember it I'm being honest with you but I do know that I was interested in it like I really really wanted it but I just couldn't justify $30 in Barnes and Nobles. They're out of pocket for that. And then I have The Lost Boy, which was also sent to me by Robin. Um, I remember I was on a live show talking about, you know, Peter Pan and how Once Upon a Time actually had Peter Pan as a villain. And he was one of the greatest, like, villains I've seen on TV. And also one of the most formidable villains on Once Upon a Time. And everyone in the chat said that if I liked the depiction of Peter Pan in Once Upon a Time, I needed to read Lost Boy. Because Captain Hook is actually the hero and Peter Pan is actually the villain. And so I put this on my wish list and I am interested to pick it up because I want to see more of that depiction. I mean I have heard that Peter Pan wasn't a really good character in the first like original story um, but I want to see him intentionally depicted as a villain in a book because I've only seen it on TV. And then the last book is actually an arc from Orbit and this released in July and this is the Jassad Air. Um, this is an Egyptian inspired fantasy if I'm not mistaken. Um, it says get ready for an unmissable tale of shattered kingdoms, forbidden magic, and the cunning royals of Sarah Hashem's Egyptian inspired epic fantasy debut. At 10 years old, the heir of Jassad fled a massacre that consumed her entire family. At 15, she buried her first body. At 20, her carefully crafted lies are starting to crumble. I really enjoyed following this in The Will of the Many um, because he is heir to a kingdom that has fallen and so he has to lie about his identity a lot because he doesn't not that he's really afraid of being recognized but he knows that like it's going to open an entirely different can of worms if people know that he is the fallen heir or the heir to a conquered kingdom and so this just makes me more enticed with this story because we're centered around that we're following a character um, whose kingdom has fallen and her entire family is dead and she is lying about her identity and also there's just been a lot of Egyptian inspired fantasies as of late and they have all been very interesting so far so and I've seen a lot of people really anticipate this release for this year. It's already out but it kind of makes me want to pick up this arc because I should definitely review it. And that pretty much wraps up my extended and long book haul. Thank you guys for watching my video and making it to the end and I will see you in the next one.